It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Offbeat has a question. Down payment on my house was 3.5%, and the interest rate is also 3.5%. Would it make sense to make extra payments to hit that 20% equity and refinance to get rid of the PMI? Mm. What do you think? All right. Paying so, off the house. Offbeat. How how old are how old is offbeat? Do we have any any information there? He did not say, but offbeat, if you want to throw that in the chat, that might help us with the answer. So here's here's what's here's what stinks about buying houses with by the way, if you're brand new to us and you've never interacted with us before, conventional wisdom has always been when you buy your first home or when you buy a home, you gotta put twenty percent down. That's hard in this housing market. Right now, prices are running away from us, interest rates are increasing. And being young is difficult. It's just a hard thing. So we offer a little bit of reprieve. We say on your first time home purchase, you don't have to put 20% down. You can put down as low as 3%, 5% in order to kind of get on the home ownership train. So long as you make sure that your uh, housing costs, principal interest, taxes, insurance, insurance including PMI does not exceed 25% of your gross income. If you can stay inside that guardrail, then it's okay if you put less down. Problem of putting down less than 20%, you have to pay PMI. PMI is this special type of insurance that only applies to folks who have less than 20% equity and it's essentially protect the lender. You're paying for insurance, it doesn't even protect you, it protects the guy you're borrowing the money from. And frankly, it kind of sucks. Like it's not fun, it's expensive, it doesn't have any utility for you but it's sort of the nature of the beast. So Offbeat, the question that I have to ask is, what is your age? Offbeat is 23. 23, all right, so mm-hmm. here, here's my thing, right? As much as PMI stinks, let's say that, it, so you're at a three and a half percent interest rate, and while it would be great to pay every dollar down on that to get to 20% to try to refi, if you ran a cost-benefit analysis and looked at the cost of your PMI and assumed the dollars it would take for you to go from 3.5% up to 20% in equity, and you calculated the return on investment of doing that, right? Like PMI falls off and it cost me this much money to do that, I think you would recognize the payoff was not all that exciting, right? Like it wasn't all that beneficial because when you lay that side by side with a 23-year-old who can put $1 to work, do you realize That $1, if you put it in your army of dollar bills, working for you, compounding through time, by the time that you get to 68, do the math right, 21 to 65, 23 to 68, it will have turned into $88. $1 can turn into 88. You can either take $1 and satisfy 3.25% interest, so $1 will save you 3.25 pennies, or... You can take $1 and turn it into $88 over the long term. So I think at 23, even if you have PMI, perhaps it doesn't make the most sense to like get really aggressive, even in order to knock off that PMI. But again, I, I, I never want to just offer blanket advice. To do the calculation, figure right. out what would it cost for me to get to 20% equity and what's the benefit of that PMI falling off and then what is the opportunity cost? That means the net, the second best alternative that I'm not doing of not putting that money to work for me. I think when you run the mathematics on that, you're going to see for a 23-year-old, as much as PMI stinks, you know, it's kind it's of the, the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Your dollars are even more powerful for that. He did um, write in and say he's currently on step four and five of the food, and he knows he wants to be past that before he even considers that, which Love I thought was That's a great, great That's point, great. and it tells me that you're on the right track. But then even, to Bo's point still, maybe you pass those while you're still in your 20s, and that might, you know, you have to do the math, mm-hmm. but you need to consider where your dollars have the most power and the most bang for your buck, quite frankly. Give me permission to attack one more thing on this. Yes, permission Uh, granted. I don't think we often realize how many things in our world are negotiable, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm I'm trying to think back. Yeah, no, this is true. I, until my most recent home purchase, did not put, uh, or I did not put 20% down on the first house that I bought. I did not pay PMI. I know, you're so good at negotiating stuff, which is, it's a great... When point you, and challenge. What though. happened is, is when I was buying my house, rates were falling, and I want—I can't remember where rates were when I bought my house. Not as attractive as they were the past couple years. My first home, it was decent. 
Well, one of the things I was able to do is I was able to talk to my lender, say, man, I really don't want to pay this primary, uh, this, this PMI insurance. Uh, what are some solutions? He said, oh, we'll I have a couple different solutions. Uh, if you were willing to take a premium on your interest rate. So if instead of right now, the market for mortgages is 4%, uh, but if you're willing to pay four and a quarter on this loan over the next 30 years, 30 year fixed, what we can do is we'll do some lender paid PMI. I, as the lender, will write a check to pay all of your PMI for the whole thing. And that way you don't have to satisfy. Well, I kind of knew that house I bought was not going to be my forever home. I knew that it was going to be the first home that I bought, but I probably wasn't going to be paying on it for the next 30 years. Probably wasn't going to be paying on it long enough to have paid 20% equity in. Now, fortunately, houses go up and so you build you know, phantom equity. But I kind of realized, I ran this equation, I said, you know what, I can pay a premium on the interest rate, and based on my expectancy of being in this house, I don't think I'm going to be in there that long. The point I'm making is, don't just assume that PMI is a thing you have to pay. Ask your lender, hey, what options are available to me? And I would ask a number of different lenders. I've done this, and I've helped clients with this. Get two or three lenders to tell you what products they have available, what things are available, what programs they're running that might be attractive for. And you may be amazed to figure out that this thing that you thought was a certainty might not be a certainty. That same thing applies to like refinances. A lot of times you don't have to refinance to drop your interest rate. Let's say that you're at this three and a half percent rate offbeat and then your rate, somehow rates go back and they're down to two and a half percent. You may not have to refi to get down there. You might just be able to ask for a rate modification. Couple hundred bucks, lender drops your rate, Bob's your uncle. It's the most amazing thing in the world. <laughs> Know that you have some resources available to you. Ask questions. Whenever it comes to like advocating for yourself, the second best question you can get is no. First best being yes. So just ask the question.